today we're going to make some Colombian empanadas. Now I've been asked, what's the recipe for these? And I don't know. Um, I was taught in Colombia by my ex-wife's mother. And it was, put a bunch of this, put some of that, put some hot water, mix till it feels right. Um, so I don't really know. But today maybe we're going to figure that out. Francis is going to come and help me. Uh, because she wants to know so we'll work through it and we can figure out a recipe and we'll do some video clips for this for those who actually want to know about Colombian empanada now why Colombian What you found around here is primarily empanadas from Chile. They're trigo, they're flour based. That's okay. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, it's just kind of pasty and there's not a lot of intrinsic taste to it. It's probably not that good for you, not that I care about that. But the Colombian empanadas use a corn masa, a corn flour. And I think it has much more taste, it has more character, it's probably better for you. I just love Colombian empanadas and so that's what we're going to do today. Let's start off by getting the potatoes ready. Now the stuffing, one of the traditional uh, stuffings for the Colombian empanadas is potato and meat, uh, ground meat. So you take these potatoes which here they're called Super Cholo. Now, be careful. I was, I got it confused and I was calling them Pop, Poppy Cholo. Um, that actually kind of means pimp. So, these are not Poppy Cholo. These are Super, super Cholo. Now, because they tend to come dirty, I'll take a piece of steel wool that I don't use on anything but potatoes. And I'll scrub it down. And as you can see, it kind of peels it at the same time. So you get nice and clean and you don't have to deal with the peel and it goes pretty quick. Okay, here we've cut up a few onions, uh, diced them up, and uh, that's primarily just for flavor. taking those potatoes and give them a rough uh, mash up and we're going to mix the beef and the spices into those potatoes and that'll be the filling. Okay here I've got some ground beef and I've got ground pork. Now in Colombia when I was taught this you couldn't go buy ground beef, uh, ground meat and so you would go to the store and it would be here kind of like the market except their equivalent of super maxi in those days it was the same way the meat would be laying out it would not be refrigerated there'd be flies buzzing on it it would smell and this was in like a nice supermarket so you would go and kind of pick through and find the beef that was the least revolting and you would take it back and they would have these old-fashioned grinders but it wouldn't have the grinder like we had in the US where it would come out the holes it would be these two metal plates that would kind of mash it, They'd pulverize it. And it was really difficult to, to do it that way. So you're grinding this beef up, and but that's what you would use 15 years ago in Colombia. Now it's complete, now it's like going to a supermarket in the US and you can buy all the ground, ground beef you want and it's delicious. Here, because this ground beef has that weird flavor, you mix pork in with it along with spices and it takes that weird taste away. Now we're going to add cumin. Cumino? Comino. Cumin. And whether you like cumin or not, it's key to this. And as I was just saying, I'm middle of the road on the cumin. But with this, you quickly appreciate the flavor that's in there and so you need a fair amount. So what's a fair amount? I don't know. We have about a pound of each of this, which is going to be quite a bit of uh, meat. And 
I guess I'm going to sprinkle enough to cover it. Now remember this is going to be mixed with about an equal amount of potatoes. And so whatever you put on here, it's going to be diluted by half. But I would say that's a fair amount of cumin to start. Now I also like to, I've added this because of the meat here. There's going to be delay, so I'll have to cut this out of the video so people aren't sitting waiting. I like to put fennel seed. Now this is not traditional, you don't have to do it, but the fennel seed works really well with this weird tasting beef. I use it in hamburger, I use it every time I use ground beef from here, I'll use fennel seed and it, it really helps a lot. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but there's something about it that cuts that bad taste. And so we're just going to cook this down for a while. Okay, we got the meat done, mixed in with the potatoes. We'll taste that in a minute to see if we need to add cumin. I didn't put any garlic powder in yet, and I definitely want to do that. Now we're trying to find the recipe, and I don't know what the recipe is, because there never was one. So what I'm going to do, usually I dump in the amount. And thinking about it, I think it's about two cups. So I'm going to put two cups in there and we'll see how we have. Now this is yellow corn. Here, let me. One. Two. Three. Two and something. Yeah, it looks about right. So let's say about two cups. And that's white. Now you can use white. I use this for arepas. And you can use white, but that's not the way you're supposed to do it, and I stay with what's delicious. <laughs> okay, so we have that. Now this will horrify some people, but I'm gonna take this juice from the meat, and I'm gonna add in well, a couple tablespoons, maybe, I guess. And we need to put some salt. Salt. One and a half teaspoons, we'll say. Sounds about right. I always just put a little on my hand because that's what she always did. She didn't have any uh, measuring cups. She didn't have any measuring spoons. She would use her hands or the, her eye. Okay, and now we're going to put some hot water in there. The initial mixing, you can use a spoon, but at some point, it's by hand. Okay, we'll start with that. <laughs> now it's difficult to say because it really, it's like doing pasta like you mentioned. It depends on the day, the humidity, the temperature of how much is going to go in there. So we'll just uh, we'll just add until it feels about right. Let's get it in the picture. Checking what you had it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Also, it'll sit for a little while and it'll dry out, and then you have to add a little more. So we've got one cup in there. So you kind of go until you don't have any, until it's not like loose stuff in there? Well, it'll be loose, but you can, you go until you can compress it. 
So this right here is about right, except by the time you get done mixing the rest of it together, it'll it'll dry, dry it out, and then you have to add a little more. See, like you've got pockets of powder still yeah. there. Do you want me to use my hands? Yeah, if you want, you don't have to. This is actually rolling pretty good, so. Now, can you mix it too much? No. Okay, because I know some doughs, you know, you can. <laughs> yeah, this is not like that. This well, is good. a. This is not. Well, it's gluten that ca that causes that, and this is not a gluten type of. I mean, I don't know if there's gluten in there or not, but if there is, it's not enough to cause that get tough thing that goes on. So it was a corn flour, salt, mm -hmm. and hot water. And a little fat. Oh, that's right in the fat. You can use vegetable oil. Um, I said off camera, some people will suggest using an egg. I just don't use an egg because that's not the way I was taught. Now, should you break it up into sections or nope. just leave it like that? Not yet. Yeah, let's see how it's feeling. Oh, it feels pretty good. Yeah. Just make a ball. Okay. Does it have to chill or anything? Nope. And there's no kneading. All you're doing is uh, getting consistency. Yeah, you just just roll it into a ball. Now we wait a little bit, and we'll probably have to add a little more water, and then we can start. Let's see if you can remember all the complicated steps there. And if you don't have a rolling pin, if you have the right kind of wine bottle, that works too. <laughs> I actually broke my rolling pin. Uh, you want to be careful not, not to, to get, get it thin, too right? thin. That's not only will it break, but it won't fry up uh, properly. That's all right. Yeah, it's borderline. I think it's probably okay. The thinnest part will be cut off anyway. Uh, so give it a try. Filling goes in next. Yep. Goes in the bottom third. You put that in kind of like a ball too. About right now. Uh huh. And then you just pick up the cellophane and roll it over. And work from the inside out. Press it down. It's delicate, so you know, be kind of careful. And then take the bowl and press down and twist. You know you could